package from China. Welcome to the Wicked Gamer and Collector. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. So in today's video we are going to talk about the Nintendo Light Switch clone. Yes, our friends from China created a new portable system that looks or that just basically wraps off Nintendo Switch. Alright, so that's the question, what are we going to get? Let's take a close look at the box itself. Alright, we have this old classic box. This is by the way the X series of portable systems. I did a lot of reviews about them. This is the X7. Really funny, I have never reviewed this thing before. I know the colors are new, so the model itself, it's new, it's more like the Nintendo Switch clone or ripoff, what I already mentioned before. But this one, X7, I never did it. I reviewed the X6 and X9, don't ask me what happened to the X8, maybe it's coming. Who knows? Right here, we've seen some pictures, not very important. The Whipping off the new Super Mario. And here at the side where you can find the different models. We're having 4, 8 and 16 gigabytes. Don't know what for which version this is because there is nothing. Yeah, nothing is pointed out here. And we're having these versions. And yeah, I ordered this one that looks more like the switch with the two colors. Let's do a little unboxing, let's see what we're going to get. Let's see, let's see what's inside. It comes with a power supply, crappy earphones, having an EV out cable because it can connect to the television. It comes with this message from, oh yeah, there's Spire, can you please give me good feedback? Yeah, well, naughty boy. And we have a USB cable for data transfer and charging. Ooh, look what I found. China toilet paper manual! Yeah! Alright, this is in the language. There is not even freaking English. The box itself. And let's see what we're going to get. There's no X7 on this one, so there's a little bit of bummer. The screen protector is not. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> Man, there are all my screen protector. <laughs> all right, so nevertheless, this is what we're going to get. I must say, hmm, it's not bad at all. It's not bad at all. Oh. Of course, cheap analog sticks, but the model, to be honest, I like it. The model, I like the design. It's more like a fusion with the PlayStation Vita and and the yeah PlayStation Vita and Nintendo. So what if Nintendo or PlayStation made a portable system? Would it look like this? Who knows? Um, yeah, what do we have here? We have at the side the D-pad. A lot of people really hate these D-pads. Oh. Here we're having the four buttons we can find on almost every system. This doesn't do anything. Select, start, back button, two analog sticks, two shoulder buttons. At the top we're finding volume control, locking mechanism, and if you're holding the power button, it goes on. At the back we're finding two speaker holes. I'm not, nah, they're not using stereo sound. That is very unique. Crappy camera, like always. And a nice decal says portable multimedia pla plater. Not player, but plater. Oh, those Chinese, come on. We have a plater, people. So, Captain Obvious moment, we're having the egg. 8 gigabyte version because of this nice Chinese shiny sticker. I like it. Nice. At the bottom we're finding USB for charging and data transfer. Two, two jack connections, one headphone, other one TV out or another way around. Reset button and here we have a CF slot for adding games. So I'm curious. Let's power it on. I can see myself. Oh I like this. These light up, and at the top we're finding light up buttons. Nice. <sighs> they are using the same software exactly like, let's say the X9, X12, X16, and name it. It's recognizing MSD, and uh, yeah, I'm going to give you a little overview. 
so yeah the first thing that i'm noticing the view angle is like all the other systems the it doesn't matter which x version you have it all has this wouldn't say horrible more like this basic screen not very very all right here we can find the games some preloaded uh, so far i know you cannot swap them out uh, we have in games let's see we have more here we can find the directories there are so far i know no games on this device or maybe some and that means they are naughty let's see browser function the browser function no there's not internet this is more like going internal memory and the card memory or the sd slot we can watch some videos listen to music no i didn't want to do that as you can see it's responding very slow really enough okay settings here we can adjust the display let's see if we can put the brightness on yeah all right okay this is the brightest it's going to get power saving some basic things tv out function we have advance let's see what kind of information this thing has and uh, maybe in a future video i can do a comparison with the software all right so that's what you're going to get there's nothing much to do if you want to watch some videos on this thing it's possible but keep in mind it's all low resolution so don't expect much from it but let's play some games and uh, let's see how it is running on the system all right let's check out the game boy oh, i want to say if you're going back to the menu i'm going to show you for the people who are going to bitch about the x rate ratio we go into settings screen size Original size, scale, and fill screen. Okay, let's choose the original size, and this is what happens when you're choosing original size. Return to game. And it looks pretty horrible. So, um, oh yeah, and keep in mind, if you're uh, swapping out the scale version or the screen resolution, how do you want to call this, it will swap it for all the freaking games. So, not only Game Boy, Game of Thrones, etc., etc., etc. Hmm. Ooh, doesn't sound bad at all. Sounds good. Oh yeah, of course. All the sound effects are here. Yep. So Game Boy Emulation is pretty damn nice on this thing. Alright, so let's see if this thing has the same problem if it comes to emulation. Oh yeah, the sound is really... Oh. No, I don't want, don't want to see the F word. I don't want to say it! Oh man. No, people, I cannot do the Christmas dance on this music. No, I can't. Hmm. Alright, so the sound itself isn't bad. Still having, hearing some weird stuff going on, but okay, let's play. I tested game on a lot of systems and it can run good or it can run like shit. So, let's see. So far, so good. Sound is good. Hmm. Can I do the derby stuff? Can I do the derby stuff? Ah, oh, no. I have seen and hear worse. So, in overall, not bad at all. No, no. I hate this D-pad, by the way. I really hate it. The unlock stick, it works. It works even better than the unlock, than the D-pad. Ooh. And the buttons are over here. No. Ah, there it is. What? I think it's more like the same of the Game Boy Classic. It runs fine. 
Top, top, top. Well, there it is. Deep, 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 deep. Time for meme. Oh man, this runs like shit. I've played this game too much to hear that it is not running perfectly. The sound is a little bit off. You can hear it on the sound, the frame drop. The D-pad itself is not bad for games like this. Well then overall, if you want to play fighting games, oh, it's a no-go. Absolutely a no-go. Okay, I'm going to try out Mega Drive Sonic 3. And the reason why I choose this game, because Sonic 1 runs good. Or good, 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 good. Because Sonic 3 always have a big problem on devices like this. Hmm. I must say, I have seen worse. So I'm getting the point. Yeah, they that, 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 that did fix some things. But the sound, the frame rate is not pretty near perfect. So if you want to play Mega Gear games, I can already tell you this is going to be a problem because this. Not all the games are supported. And I'm not going to try the bonus stage, it's going to run like shit, I know for sure. Alright, New Geo. Mm hmm. Alright. I got to use the D-pad. Well, the, of the D-pad, the analog stick, because the D-pad is pretty damn horrible, nice thing. Okay, just great. Where are my buttons? Oh, here I am. <laughs> Man, this analog... It works, but... No, no. Oh my god, this analog stick is freaking horrible. I, uh, I have this handicap sometimes, but this is totally non acceptable. Oh, can I do? Can I even play with this? So, to be honest, if you want to play fighting games, this is going to be a problem. Oh my god, this unlock stick is freaking horrible. Yep. It's just horrible. Look at the frame rate. Oh my god. I want to go back and do the C. Ah! Super Famicom. And now it goes turbo mode. And now it stabilizes. Stupid skateboard attack. And the funny thing is that it's running pretty decent now. So if it comes to Super NES, Super NES this is what you're going to get. Poor emulation, or now it sounds good, but you're getting some poor em emulation in overall of all the games, and nah. All right, people, so for the final conclusion regarding the X7 Switch clone from China. So if you look at the software itself, I can tell you already, it's exactly the same like the X9 and X12. So, spoiler, I will make a comparison video um, but then this is what you're going to get. Uh, the software itself is not new. It's all more of the same. So I really like the layout itself. The D-pad, yeah, it's horrible. Analog stick, they play like a cheap Chinese <laughs> analog stick. So this is what you're going to get. I really like the design. It looks very nice. It feels very sturdy. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments. I want to thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell. And if you're into gaming, retro gaming, 
don't forget to check out the Wicked Gaming channel. See you next time. Bye-bye.